$10 from Claire the Adventurer. Love seeing the Sonic block and reliving the area of Tude, where I used to play Sega and watch Goof Troop. All right, everyone, get ready. Here it is, Mike89 again with Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles. And Knuckles, and Knuckles, and Knuckles, and Knuckles, and Knuckles, and Knuckles. And Knuckles. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we should have done. We should have just had the massive tower of Sonic and Knuckles cartridges. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we need to use a clear file. Uh, before I start, I'd just like to thank everyone for um, making the donations for this to come onto the schedule. Uh, I went to bed last night and it wasn't even an incentive, and I woke up this morning and it was met. So <laughs> that was... <laughs> <laughs> that, that was pretty awesome to see. As it should be. You, this is definitely a run to see. Uh, I hope to do that uh, assessment some justice. So getting underway in three, two, one, let's do this. So much like in Sonic 2, we're going to have Tails follow us around, and it's uh, not going to be obvious why until late in the run, much like in Sonic 2. Yeah, uh, whereas in Kempland 2, that's fairly early on. That's not technically necessary. The big thing for Sonic 2 was the Metropolis 3 wrap. Here, there are, um, well, let's just say tricks that Tails allows you to do. He also makes other tricks significantly harder. <laughs> so, um, you're going to watch out for a few Tails trolls. That is pretty common. Uh, also, you want uh, to use a file save here, not just for safety in a marathon, you know, just to have that save at the level you need it to be at, but because, thanks to Kresen, um, who is uh, just an absolute wizard and has uh, found skips, made other skips easier, and done a ton of work on this game in the last year or so. Huge props to Kresen. He's advanced this game by five minutes, if not more. Yeah, definitely. And... Uh, one of those things is like, hey, we switched away from in-game time, right? Why aren't you resetting to skip these in-between zone cutscenes? <laughs> <laughs> so we do that now, and we use a save file. And that saves um, about a minute or so over the course of the run. We used to do it in uh, this zone as well, because the cutscene at the end of Angel Island 2 is fairly lengthy. But um, it turns out that that actually makes another trick later on not work. And no one knows why. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> However, it's also no longer faster for a reason I'll show you in a minute. You can cancel the music there by uh, getting the bubble shield there at the first moment possible, basically after the score tally, but um, it's actually good music, so... <laughs> All of this game has great music. Yes. There are very limited uses for the bubble shield here, but... The, uh, one of the more significant ones is right here. Bouncing all the way up after getting that lightning shield. Uh, you're not going to see it again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. I don't get that one very often. That's yeah. a very specific uh, ramp height. So like in um, Sonic Adventure and Sonic 2 and pretty much every Sonic game, uh, <laughs> if you jump off slopes, they uh, significantly change your jump trajectory. So what uh, Mike is going for here is a memory manipulation, which will actually skip the uh, cutscene where Knuckles jumps on the button. And this is something Prezm found, um, where you uh, cause sparkles from the electric shield to show up right when the uh, ship shows up. And then you do a spin dash at a specific point. And uh, at, because of that, um, the button will already be pressed by the time that the cutscene happens. So it saves about three seconds. It's a nice save. It works because it does. <laughs> so uh, he's manipulating his position here in air so that he doesn't hit the flames there from Robotniks uh, while he's uh, his machine while he's hitting it. Okay, so if this has worked correctly, the screen will shift a little bit, and uh, then you'll hear the sound of the bridge blowing up. There yes. we go. Nice stuff. Now, so far, you haven't really seen too much uh, that's crazy. Just uh, really solid platforming and fluid movement through the stages. That's going to continue for this stage. Just uh, using a two-tap spin dash there as opposed to the six, which gives you the most speed, just because it sends you through that area at the right speed to go through it at the most fluid pace. And 
Well, that's not something that happens everywhere. It is definitely a consideration in several places. You want to do specific speeds, just like he's going to slow down a little bit here so that he can land on that platform. And then you can either spin dash jump or bounce off that enemy to get up here. The spin here. dash jump is fairly risky because you have a very small space in which to work. And if you um, don't get the jump off before you go off the edge, uh, it's a bit of a pain to get back up there. This is um, one of the worst bosses in the run, actually, uh, because uh, ideally you'll bounce and just get all the hits at the very start. In practice, that, that, in practice that doesn't happen a lot. That was still a pretty decent fight. It's, it's very difficult getting all six hits because for the majority of the time, you're going to be hitting him off screen, so you pretty much have to imagine in your mind's eye and go off sound. Probably one of the hardest fights in the game to do fast. <laughs> Alright, so up to this point you're probably wondering, what, what's the big deal about this game? <laughs> it's, ju it's just been regular platforming. Don't let the wall catch you, dude. It begins. Oh, dude, uh, I, I don't know if you're going to make it up. Oh. oh. Um. oh. So that was actually <laughs> intentional, as you may have guessed, <laughs> based on our reactions. Uh, because what that did is it unloaded Act 1 in the game's memory allowing him to do a level wrap. So he used a specific setup there to get the sub-pixels right that the interaction with the wall as it was moving forward just kind of zipped him down below. Then he held right, zipped uh, past the level boundary, and ended up at the end. And then he had to do some stuff there off camera to get the camera to the right vertical position. And then he just kills the boss. It also looks like the blades should hit me, but they don't because the, uh, the hitbox of the blades, even though it looks like it's much larger, is actually smaller than that of the whirlpool. And you can stand on top of the whirlpool. Uh, you know, you're meant to do it when it comes back down at the end. But um, you can actually stand right on the edge of it and you won't get hit by the blade. So you just get hits easily that way. Anyway, if you thought, if you thought we broke that level, um, <laughs> there's... <laughs> <laughs> this is where the run truly begins. Um, Marble Garden through launch base, nothing from this point looks anything like you remember it as a kid. Starting in like five seconds. <laughs> so if you remember, uh, if you watched the Sonic 2 run, uh, in Metropolis 1, he panned the screen down and it wrapped vertically. That happens here too, so he just went through a death plane and then fell down to this area of the level. That death plane was unloaded because it was not on camera. And uh, now, he's going to unload this spring here, do a precise jump as he's exiting that spin dash state to clip into the wall there. And now is where the fun really begins. So, again, doing this death plane skip and a zip gets him to the loop back area. That was where he got high enough to get to the, uh, the Hydro 2 boss. Now, for whatever reason, going... Damn it. Oh, yeah, Tails. Um, having Tails here is actually a little bit uh, annoying. So what he's doing there is a manipulation to reset Tails. He needs to have Tails arrive at a specific time. And now, for whatever reason, ducking there in the loopback area spawns Act 2 boss. Um, so what he did was a series of very fast spin dashes. This is uh, one of the harder parts of this boss fight. That sends him a specific number of pixels, either left or right, depending on which way he's facing. Hi, Sonic. <laughs> Bye, Sonic. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, and then that allowed him to get into the position to kill the boss. And now he's going to have Tails hit the capsule here, um, which is kind of a tricky thing. He's holding left, and then... Oh, there you go. <laughs> there it is. Now, um, yeah, as you can see, this, uh, this looks normal, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so after he hits the capsule, uh, you need to be a little bit focused because there's a chance that Tails will just fly around and you see that crusher there, it can kill you after you beat the stage. Yeah. <laughs> and um, speaking of broken levels, um, so there are these wheels and uh, he just kind of got on one without getting on one. You may have seen him fall fast and then now he's on the ceiling and falling left. This is wheel glitch. <laughs> Going into the boss room and... <laughs> yeah, things get a little wild. <laughs> so, Wheel Glitch actually doesn't really save time in Act 1, despite the level wrap, because of the way you have to do the boss fight to maintain it. It's for Act 2. What uh, Wheel Glitch does is it provides uh, gravity in any direction, whichever way is down for Sonic Sprite, basically. 
is down for gravity. Oh, oh and he jumped. Shoot. Um, I'm guess, uh, guessing you're going to give that another go. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to die. Yeah. So, um, it, it's also important that he... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I can't even die now! And, and, uh, okay, okay. So I need to explain something else. I can't even reset and go back to the start of Carnival Night 1. Um, <laughs> Tails, okay, please. So, so there's a... Um, so there's a thing that happens uh, when you beat Act 2 of a stage and it plays the Act 2 bonus countdown. Uh, the game then decides that, okay, you are in the next zone now. Um, and it updates your save file to say that you're in the next zone now. I have to play this normally. Yeah. I can't remember <laughs> the last time I did this. <laughs> <laughs> I did it the other day. Um, so yeah, if you beat a, uh, say a Marble Garden, we beat the Act 2 boss in Act 1. So it doesn't actually save in the save file that we beat Marble Garden. So if he reset the game, it wouldn't start at Carnival Night. He'd have to start Marble Garden from the beginning. There was one race uh, for, uh, what, I believe it was Sonic Speed, where I ended up having to do that three times. <laughs> because I just had all sorts of shenanigans in Carnival Night. But yeah, um, I was going to say that it's important he doesn't game over here, so he can only have so many attempts at that. And then Tails just said, all right, boss, you're dead. <laughs> hey, Tails was Which helping. I would have loved for him to do if, if I had actually played correctly, but... Yeah, <laughs> but he <laughs> accidentally... It never works out that way. <laughs> yeah, he accidentally jumped, and unless you jump off specific objects, uh, one of which are these barrels, are, uh, you lose the wheel glitch. And he doesn't want to lose the wheel glitch. What he would have been doing is there are actually two methods here, one of which is slightly faster. One uh, is very similar to what Tails does actually, where you just kind of zip up and run along the top of the stage and get right to the boss area. Another one is a little bit trickier in some ways, but easier in others, and puts you in Knuckles' path, which is just faster. So using either of those methods, you can get to the boss um, honestly and have it beat by well before what you're seeing on the timer right now. So yeah, if I had done everything correctly, it would have been uh, just over a minute in fact. Two. So this is uh, yeah, an unfortunate time loss, but at least it was funny, right? Yeah, this yeah. is everyone's favorite barrel. <laughs> um, <you're supposed> to <laughs> <laughs> not for that reason. <laughs> no. That's not something I've seen before. <laughs> I've seen it a couple of times. The, uh, yeah, the physics in this game are very special. <laughs> so yeah, basically he'd be getting to this area if he got to Knuckles' path uh, at, in about 45 seconds. If he did the other way, he'd be getting to the boss area at about that time. <laughs> this game, uh, it does things sometimes. <laughs> it's a beautiful game. Well, you know what? The Carnival Night 1 boss was the one I was most scared of in the whole run. And hey, technically, I beat it first go. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Exactly. laughs> I, it's also pretty much the one that I would be most scared of, honestly. I, okay, so as soon as the uh, bonus countdown finishes here, I am going to reset the game. And that's just skipping the cutscene uh, in between Carnival Night and Ice Cap. It saves a little bit of time. It's not by any means the largest skip. Those are. Uh, after launch base and after uh, uh, Sky, Sky Sanctuary, Sanctuary so. respectively, but it's still faster, so we do it. Donation while snowboarding? Sure thing. We have 2589 from Pineapple. Mike, thank you for everything you've ever done to make speedrunning approachable for so many people, including myself. Good luck, and as intended. No, not getting the checkpoint there, that's ballsy. <laughs> oh, man. So um, what he's going to be doing here is pausing on a specific... Thanks, Tails. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tails. <laughs> is uh, pausing on a specific frame on this platform as it passes Spikes. Got it. Uh, and then that allows him to get slope glitch by uh, a specific I interaction. Like angle. Uh, no, this doesn't yeah. look good. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try it again. Uh, yeah. One more time. By a specific interaction with the uh, little thing that that breaks, actually. And uh, that's, this is why I was saying it was Balti <laughs> to not get that checkpoint. Um, but once you get Slope Glitch, you just kind of get a specific setup with, uh, you know, your momentum and your timing, and it'll carry you to the end of the stage. This used to be one of the hardest and most inconsistent tricks in the entire run. Again, shoutouts to Kresm. <laughs> 
uh, there is now a very reliable setup for it. Um, there's another one that HDL champions, which um, I find a bit less easy, but there's been uh, a lot of work done on Ice Cap and making it more consistent. Oh, I actually didn't mean to die there. <laughs> That's okay, we'll, we'll try it again. This will actually be a little bit faster because uh, if he does this method correctly, he will once again skip Act 2 completely. Maybe uh, hit the checkpoint this time? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> what do you ah. have? Can I get a, a quick <laughs> a, uh, quick donation? Sure. Right, speaking of which, HDL243 donates $5. HDL here. Mike, it was your classic Games Done Quick Tales run that served as a catalyst for me reaching out to you and getting involved with the community that would later develop into something incredible. It's been an absolute pleasure having you there as a pillar of the community and the Sonic games at large. Best of luck for the next chapter of your That's life, fun. friend. HDL is easily one of the best runners of this game, so shout outs to him. That's better. Yeah, that, that looks good. No spring, though. Ah. Oh, so no okay. act two boss skip. Yeah, um, it's possible to actually skip into the tunnel at the end of act two, and not only do this skip, but also to skip the boss. So uh, he did some off-screen maneuvering in the loopback area there to get the camera down a bit lower. Um, in Knuckles' path, you would just jump up from the ground and up here. And now, uh, yeah, that's a boss. Very good boss kill. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, wait. <laughs> uh, so much for zeros. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot I actually had to do things after this. <laughs> yeah, um, you can beat Act 2 kind of, sort of, in zero seconds, but, um, you know, one second is still pretty fast, I think. Now he's going to spawn this Flybot, and... Uh, no, nah, I'm doing it the other way. Yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. I was, I was thinking uh, you were going to do a different method, but the method he's doing here... Um, this is going to go up to this area with a platform that falls after you step on it. And with proper timing, he can kind of cancel falling off of it and activate slope glitch. So what that's going to allow him to do is to fall into the floor. Yeah, so he can reset this. Uh, this is one of two methods. The other method is frame perfect, um, but you can Got kind it. of pause buffer it. Now he has slope glitch, and uh, yeah, he's going to carry that over here, go into the floor, and level wrap. And this is about 115. I have enough time. Um, uh, this actually depends on uh, the the time bonus that you get at the end. Actually, affects uh, when you defeat the final, when you defeat the boss here. So there are two copies of this boss for Knuckles. They uh, kind of have the same AI because Sonic is only supposed to fight one of them. And you notice uh, Sonic balancing. That's slope glitch, and that is very important here. He also has Tails manipulated to be spin dashing there. That is so Tails does not hit the boss here, which is very important. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so you notice that that, um, <laughs> that boss is still there, uh, looking a little bit worse for wear, but still there. So he's going to wait for a few seconds and then kill that boss. Wait for it. Yes, Victory Peacock! Peacock man. <laughs> so yeah, um, waiting until you're in Act 2 and then killing that boss counts as killing this Act's boss. And as remember far as what the we said concerned. about Act 2 and the countdown <laughs> ending the stage? Yeah, we don't have to play Launch Base 2. So that's one of the uh, more recent and more significant skips that was found. Uh, because Launch Base 2, while it's a really fun stage, uh, A, there's a very, very precise level wrap for it that is an absolute pain to get. Double frame perfect. Kind of like this one. Um, nice. First try. I hate nice. you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh, oh. oh and I got a ring, too, so he, uh, now I have to take twice as long to die. Yeah, he zipped too far, unfortunately. Um, there... It, once he did the hard part really <laughs> Tails. And he killed me. I have to race that. <laughs> <laughs> Tails again. Tails is really, really trying to help, okay? I just want everyone on the couch to confirm that there's only one controller plugged in. There's no sabotage going I, on here. I can confirm that. There is only one <laughs> controller plugged in. <laughs> so yeah, um, 
This skip, uh, the hard part is getting the floor clip here with the door. Um, I cannot do it to save my life, even though I know how to do it. And then he w wants to get to a specific point you know here. What? There we go. All right. Not taking my chances. Yeah. So he manipulated his position, and uh, it's like something like uh, nine times out of ten that level wrap works once you get to that position. Otherwise, it's more like 50 50. Okay, I'm gonna try something at the. Oh, wow. Ooh, <laughs> wow. Okay, so I'm gonna try something here. I'm going to try and get the lightning shield that's on the edge of the. Nah, I missed it. Ooh, just missed it. Yeah, just you, barely. you need to be a little bit further to the left to bring up the lightning shield. It's very precise, and the fact that tails can jump and hit the signpost as well makes it very difficult to um, line it up with any sort of accuracy. So I only go for it the once. Uh, Lightning Shield only saves about three, four seconds in this stage, so it yeah. doesn't matter that much. I play as Sonic solo, and even I only go for it once. I'm like, okay, if I can't get it in three hits, I, I don't even care. Yeah, so uh, Tails uh, quite nearly killed him uh, during that boss, and there's a few bosses like that where Tails uh, hitting the boss will keep it in iframes, and so by the time that Sonic is inside the boss attacking it, the iframes will disappear and he'll just get crushed if he has no rings. So. So Ooh, maybe no. Oof. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna have to improvise. There are two ways you can do that uh, without the lightning shield. One of that is just try to get a really good jump and hope. The other way is to uh, jump past the trigger that uh, has you go around the uh, vine thing there, and uh, that's the way I do it. But you know, it's slower. Uh, you're not supposed to be able to hit that enemy from that side. That's, uh, that's the insta-shield that I use. That, uh, the insta-shield is incredibly powerful. You actually, uh, when, whenever you use it, you are completely invulnerable from anything but spikes for 16 frames, which is over a quarter of a second. So you, nice. uh, you pass through just about anything. Like those big spike balls in Marble Garden, you can go straight through them if you're running in the other direction. And he did a uh, precise... Uh, hit and then flame dash to get six hits on the boss before entering the chase section. That is actually pretty precise. It's much more easy to just get five. There are a couple different methods, but obviously six is faster. Skipping that cutscene, uh, it's fairly long. Yeah, it's one of the longer ones, but not one of the two longest. Maybe third longest? Somewhere in there. Ah. Thanks, Nails. He's just trying to get a quick setup on uh, this trick right here um, based off the music. I don't know if I'm close enough. Let's see. Should be good. Yeah, that was nice. I, I think that, that was, was the far, furthest pixel possible, I think. <laughs> so, this is how you play the game as intended? Of course, it's by design, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I, have I still got it? Yeah, I've still got it. But um, this is going to be interesting. No. <laughs> <laughs> a now straight you know what? jump. <laughs> Let's do that again. <laughs> a straight jump is a frame perfect spin dash release, uh, and it just makes you kind of go whoop. Okay, there we go. That's better. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not worried about what's happening up ahead because there's a there's a platform that can pop out and it's right in your way. And if you get that uh, if you get that trick second go, then um, it happen it tends to be right in the way. Uh, it pops out about here. There. Yeah, and, uh, and if you touch it, then uh, the slope glitch breaks because it breaks as soon as you stand on another sprite object. That uh, sir, um, rotating platform, fortunately, is not a uh, sprite-based one. So I don't have the slope glitch anymore because this is a sprite-based object. However, I'm going to get it again in about 15 seconds. Yeah, he gets hit here so that he can uh, have a pretty precise handle on exactly where Sonic is. I get the lightning shield because it's a safety for the next trick, but uh, that also means you have to know where Sonic's the hitbox is in those funky, uh, <laughs> funky sprites. Hey, and then Act 2 starts out with this slope that's up in the ceiling, and there's no reason why it should be there other than the fact that you can do what I'm about to do here. I'm going to skip. Uh, I'm going to get to the very end of the stage with the laser boss in about 15 seconds. Got it. Uh, if he was late on slowing down there, he would have died. So. And if I was early, I would have been stuck. Yeah. 
Lightning Shield can also help you hit that slope, which is why I bring it there. It also allows you to get oh, off of this nice. a little bit sooner. It's not anywhere near as big of a deal for that. But now... Um, that was interesting. The chain was out of the crowd. <laughs> yeah. So what he's going to do here is a technique called a double spin dash, or at least attempt. What that means is he's going to get a perfect spin dash and then two very... Oh, oh that's good. Yeah, that um, was not a perfect spin dash going into there. Otherwise, it would have worked. And then do two, um, after that initial perfect spin dash, which is frame perfect, do two very fast spin dashes, one tap. And that would clip him through the laser. This is laser skip. It is one of the hardest tricks in this run. Um, it doesn't save as much time as some, but... <laughs> Well, ah, so, sometimes ah, it has. No, no space now. Yeah. It, the laser has to actually be off the screen when you're at the left side, so now he can't go far enough left. He would have to laser skip to the left, which would completely miss the point of doing laser skip the direction you want to do it. Gonna go to the hiding place. Oh, great. Now it's not secret. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, there's just nothing there for whatever reason. That's not a glitch. It's just something that you can see but not interact with. Hence, hiding place. Probably get through one or two more donations now. Yeah. Awesome. We got $25 from Flying Fox. As Mike's first co-op partner for Sonic 3 & Knuckles, I had to donate during this game. Good luck, Mike, and thank you for bringing, being a huge inspiration for so many runners. Want yeah. me to do more? Or? Go for it. All right, awesome. We have fifty dollars from Rita the Fox. This is my first GDQ I'm watching live. Yeah, I lost the count. I didn't know where I was. Uh, that just means doing this again. So more donations. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is my first GDQ I'm watching live. Glad I have a few days off this week to check out all the awesome runs and knuckles. <laughs> and knuckles. $25 from the Chuckster360. Decided to donate during the Sonic block because I have yet to complete a Sonic game, let alone get past the third zone. Good luck to Mike and all the other runners. $15 from Anonymous. Love the Sonic block. Please remember to be nice to Tails. He's just trying his best. Yeah, can't, no. can't guarantee that. Nah. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for the donation, though. <laughs> Two, wow. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's better. Yeah, the whole point in that specific time jump is to get three hits while the boss is going up as opposed to two. Four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six. <laughs> uh, so coming up here on Sandopolis 1 is going to be the reason why we brought Tails with us. Um, we're going to be needing to use him and his annoying AI to uh, basically have him push a block while we're standing on top of it to fall uh, to fall into a wall, clip into the wall, and initiate a zip. And you can't do it Sonic alone. You just have to play the stage glitchlessly otherwise. It's a fun stage, but it's long. So, yeah. If you saw what they did in Metropolis 3 in Sonic 2, it's not. Nah, that's wrong. It's um, harder. It's very, it's very similar, but uh, more difficult because you have... There's a couple more moving parts involved. One, two, three, four, five, six. So he has to be. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> 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 yeah. So that's only the first part of the trick because then he has to get a precise six, jump five, in six. order to get the level wrap and not just the zip. <laughs> I'm playing this normally. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, cr uh, you could, I could easily sit there for five minutes and Cronin not and I, have it happen. Cronin and I did a race the other day of this, and um, I do Sonic Solo, so I don't even go for it. And um, that is pretty much what won me the race, that that skip did not cooperate for him at all. Yeah, um, it, you can still have a really good time in this game with Sonic alone. Uh, the whole reason to have Tails with you is for this and another trick later on. Which is also very, very hard. <laughs> yes. Um, it saves two minutes. It's two minutes you just can't get with Sonic alone, but if you're constantly trying to get the trick, you're just going to be wasting time otherwise. And uh, Sonic Solo and Sonic and Tails used to be on the same category, but now they're separate on the leaderboard, so if you're thinking that these Tails skips are too intimidating, don't worry so much, you can do it as Sonic Solo. 
Or as Tails, which is argu arguably the easiest character to run this game as. Sonic Solo has the fastest time. Believe that or not. It does. Nice. <laughs> that was a good one to get. Yeah, that cycle is uh, sometimes tricky. Done normally, um, without the glitches, this stage is very much based around these uh, cylinder cycles. So how good your time is depends on how many of those you're able to make primarily. This would be a perfect time for some more donations. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got $25 from Anonymous that says, this Sonic 3 and Knuckles run is incredible. Isn't that right, everyone? I think I agree. <laughs> $10 from Toei. My brother and I played this on PC so much as kids, we both know practically every tile of every act by heart. I've never gotten around to learning the speedrun, but God do I love watching this game get completely obliterated by a skilled runner. Good luck and no way, no way! $5 from Waffle House. Watching Sonic 3 like this is blowing my mind. The depth of knowledge and commentary is great. Tails nearly knocked him <laughs> back the other way. That would have been awful. Yeah, that's the tricky part of having Tails there. And pretty much the only thing in the boss fight that can go wrong, other than maybe getting that ring box. But that might actually move the block too far out of the way. Yeah. So the um, so the timed objects in Act Two actually start moving from the beginning of Act One, uh, which means that uh, when the last block opens up, I know that this platform will be in. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> I know that it's going to be in a certain place, except if the, um, except if I hit the ten ring box, apparently, because that uh, then delays it a little bit. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised you're still able to make it up there. I kind of wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is another level that wraps vertically, and. Uh, you take advantage of that in a few places. So he unloaded the walls there and just spin dashed through. And now he's going to be doing pretty much the easiest clip in the game. From this flat area, you do a full jump, and you have to do it just make sure you miss that platform. Hold left against that wall. You'll clip through every time. And here, he wants to make sure he doesn't get hit. It's not terrible if he does but it's still better to have the lightning shield for things like that little jump he just did. And here, uh, it's a little bit easier to do this uh, bit after the stair clip that he's attempting. Oh yeah, stair clips, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, stair clip is when you approach a stair. Nice. So, what, so what's going on there is, um, <laughs> so, the, so the game's kind of kind to you in uh, certain situations and it will, uh, try and keep your momentum going. It'll let you go through the corners. Um, so what I did there was I moved with enough speed and enough height to trigger that uh, mechanism to happen and then didn't get enough height to land on the platform afterwards. So instead I just fall, fall through. Uh, you're going to see that in each act of Lava Reef as well. Sorry guys. Forgot I had a mic for a second. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's actually really precise. Uh, and the frame you want to jump on actually changes for that one, depending on whether you get a perfect spin dash or not. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. I don't think I've ever done that before. Yeah, I just jumped too early. All right. Yeah, so this boss, he's going to intentionally lose the lightning shield, and that's just to get insta shield because it uh, goes through the boss there and it goes through the iframes and it makes this boss really fast. 220 is a pretty good time. Yeah, that's yeah. actually not bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really solid. Because you think it took, me, it took me two extra cycles to get the stair clip and then there was the, um, the flub with the light switch at the end. So that would have been like 204 or something if I got everything right. Yeah, without the uh, stair clip, he would have had to go through a slow section and that would have made it 
like over three minutes. It's actually possible to get stopped uh, right under that stalactite in that first corridor. And uh, as Tails goes past, he forced it. Oh, oh wow. nice. <laughs> that's, nice. That's subpixels being nice. Subpixels are smaller than a pixel, and they affect a lot of things in this game, usually for bad. But every now and then, they give you that little clip and zip there. So you just hold right after doing that spin dash. And if you have the right subpixels, you clip into the floor and zip over to where that uh, fire shield is, saving about uh, eight seconds or so. Here's stair clip number two. This one. Okay, so you actually don't need this one anymore. Oh, uh, yeah. Because if you have tails, you can just have him break those blocks. Thanks. So that's how you meant to come up there through that side. Uh, this is actually kind of a, a path that loops. So you're meant to, you know, go around for like a minute the other way and uh, come back to there. And it's kind of a trap at the end where you just get taken back up to. Uh, where you were a minute ago, but you can uh, save a whole heap of time if you come into it from the other side. Intentionally losing that shield there to have insta shield for the boss. And um, this boss, uh, there are these two things, and then in addition to that, there is this hand. The hand, um, it's not hard to get three hits at once, but he's going to kill it in this specific position. And that is going to spawn a fire shield, which enables a potential skip, which we may see him go for, but even if he misses it, the fire shield is a little bit useful in the beginning of the stage. He's lining himself up to a precise position, trying to, Oof, okay. Too early. Yeah, if he, if he got a specific frame there, he would have been able to clip into the floor using that item box. It's easier as Tails. Yeah, because Tails is shorter and he can just run under the box. Uh, Sonic only becomes short enough to get under the box when he rolls. But of course, if he's rolling, then he'll break the box. So you then also have to stand up at exactly the right time as well. It's, it's a miracle that it even works. It's a very precise trick. There's, uh, it's only like, it's a double frame perfect. Um, you can try to calculate the frame so Mike is crazy and just guns it. And he's gotten it sometimes, completely improvised. And, and then sometimes it will just crush you. That's a possibility <laughs> too. Also, this guy next to me got it in a race yesterday. <laughs> well, <laughs> I love that trick. Wow, I kept the fire shield all the way through. Uh, this actually saves about half a second here because I'll go through that instead of taking a hit. Everything else is oh, yeah. Oh, everything else is the same. So yeah, you can uh, get between those. Uh... <laughs> I thought there was going to be a um, yeah in the in the Sonic Mania layout. There's an enemy there. <laughs> <laughs> and I was expecting it. Every now and then, uh, Mike or myself or someone else who runs both this and Mania will make a mistake like that and we'll just feel stupid. Because <laughs> Lava Reef is in both games. I, I know that Claris is going to be shaking her head back there because we talked about this <laughs> earlier and now it doesn't happen to me <laughs> anymore. So here's the third and final stair clip. And he got Second it. Second try, nice. Ah. And now he's going to double spin dash through here. Okay. So this is going to be like laser skip. It's uh, yeah, double spin dash, object phasing. The good thing is that you get the momentum you need for the double spin dash to work in order there it is. Uh, there just we go. from that uh, little pipe. So I don't think I actually mentioned precisely how the double spin dash affects things. Um, basically, you have a lot of speed, and then the first spin dash and that speed kind of mess the camera up, which takes the thing that you're up against off screen long enough for you to do the second of the double spin dashes. Sorry, Alec, you're blinking, you'll miss this. Oh no! <laughs> oh no, it didn't work. Oh no. 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 I miscounted. <laughs> so yeah, what he was trying to do there is a glitch which uh, kind of stacks hits. Uh, by getting Tails uh, or Sonic into the hitbox of Knuckles and then getting hits with the other character, uh, you can kill him. Is it two hits? Yeah, two bounces. Yeah. It's all eight hits. Line. It's pretty silly. Even this stage has a glitch. Actually, I've got a few seconds. Just a sec. Oh, 
Tails, uh, uh, Tails is kind of bugged in this part of the cutscene. You have to use uh, Sonic to make him jump. Normally he will try and follow you and... Uh, oh yeah, by the way. Nice. <laughs> you, can, you can jump out of transitions like that. Um, yeah, normally he'll try and follow you, but in, in that he doesn't get control back properly, so you have to manually move him using Sonic's jump. Yeah, and um, it's actually possible to do a stair clip, uh, and that just kills you in the area where you're waiting for Knuckles to fall down. It is pretty silly, as many things in this game are. Getting the lightning shield from below using the insta shield, uh, a little bit faster than going up there. And now he's screen wrapping and using the lightning shield ability to get to this place, which is right at the end of the stage. You don't have to do that uh, spin dash jump, uh, so yeah, he only attempted it once. That would have got him right up here, and he would have been at the end of the stage getting to the boss in like 40 seconds. This boss, by the way, is the only has the only RNG in the game. Yeah, which, whether it does that attack pattern, oh nice, still getting five hits, or um, a different Six. one. Six, yeah. And that is one of the longest cutscene skips in the game. Yeah, that by itself is like 18 seconds or something. It's long. I was about to ask for donations because I forgot that there was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can still go. This level is fairly tame. All right, awesome. I got $50 from Dr. Fatbody. Hey, everybody. Dr. Fatbody here. Shoutouts to everyone on the couch. It's amazing to see all my Planet Chaos boys in one place. Mike, I cannot thank you enough for what you've done for me. From teaching me Sonic 1 to talking with me while I was losing my house to practicing games for the Sega tournament for 14 hours and going straight to work back then, I love you and all the Planet Chaos people. Here's to a happy retirement. Thank you, thank you. And I'll see you next week. He's skipping those things that kind of send you flying around in uh, often spiraling paths by just not hitting the trigger for them. That's uh, actually a pretty sick. So anytime either character lands on that, um, it changes direction, which means that uh, if Tails is there, then things can get really irritating. So I uh, just stand over there just to make sure that uh, Tails doesn't cause any shenanigans. It's actually possible to skip through the door here by getting hit into this area, but um, not only is that precise, but you obviously have to get hit. And having Barely saves any time because you lose the lightning shield, and it's a soft lock if you mess any of it up. Yeah. Shoutouts to Argic. <laughs> Who found that completely by accident. <laughs> he, as he actually tends to do, Argic is a cool guy and a member of the Sonic community. He finds the craziest things. <laughs> How's that straight jump there? Yep. Yeah, it was actually to a slight angle because um, in this game, you don't necessarily have to be 100% uh, at zero speed to do a spin dash. I should, probably should have dropped the shield. Nah. Having the shield is fine. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Because, yeah, I, <laughs> like you get hit if you mess it up, so what does it matter? <laughs> That's a good time. Yeah, good 204 is a really solid time. Probably one of the harder bosses in the game, next to uh, like the Hydro 2 boss. Yeah, definitely hard to optimize. Definitely. Oops. Mike, why? <laughs> <laughs> why would you do that? So, so again, dying intentionally to unload Act 1 in the game's memory. So if you've been paying attention to what tends to happen after that, well, um, yeah, you're right. It's another level wrap. This one. This is another one that requires tails. And is also exceptionally difficult. <laughs> you want to explain this one, Cronin? Um, yeah, so first he's going to get tails to push that door down, and that way he can uh, scroll the screen up, use the camera to uh, clip into the wall, and then when he gets in the wall, there's a very short spot where he can uh, zip, like do a tiny micro zip, and then he'll fall upwards, and he wants to get a one frame electric shield jump. And that'll land him in a perfect spot where he can initiate a zip into a level wrap that leads him right to the final boss. Sometimes you don't even get the opportunity to get that jump either. The camera can get stuck. I think that's it. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful, man. 
first try, that big two. That's that is nuts, what you just saw. That is excellent. You also have to spin Nash to um, get back in there, because again, it lowers your hitbox just a fraction. And if I hadn't, uh, then I would have actually hit the side of the um, tube and been pushed upwards, I think, and not be able to get in here, which would have been a really terrible way to lose about four minutes. <laughs> this boss is really easy. Um, you can just charge a spin dash. You don't even have to keep charging it like he is. Um, just, you know, make sure you're not too soon or too late on these when they uh, land. And <laughs> just cheese this boss. All right, so I'd like to think that this run has had its fair share of pretty crazy stuff in it. But i got one more thing up my sleeve for you guys. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you're going for this? Yep. All right. So what that, um, what that spin dash did there is it actually kind of stored the kind of panning effect of the spin dash uh, into the next loading zone, which is here. Uh, when that effect happens, uh, the, where the platforms appear to be and where they actually are are desynced. So anything on the right side of the screen at the moment is instant death. Yeah. There, there's nothing there. It looks like there's something there, but there isn't. <laughs> Floors on are the other hand, the where there appears to be nothing on the left side of the screen, there is, which means we can do this. <laughs> uh, time's coming up soon. Yeah, yeah when the screen way. fades to white. I thought I might have been able to get seven. See your tails. No. <laughs> and time. Easy. Time was 45.22. Wow. Really good for a marathon. So remembering what I said to Zaxxon about how it's sometimes better when the game throws some stuff at you. <laughs> I think that was a pretty fair display of what the game <laughs> can do to you. <laughs> yeah, it completely took a, a very significant skip away from him. It had some other shenanigans. That's Sonic 3. It, it does that. Nice. And everyone, yeah, let's get on our feet. This is his grand finale. One of the uh, true uh, best faces of the community in the past several years. Let's hear it up. Give it up for Mike. I wanted to mention it when I turned around and had a look at the crowd after Hidden Palace and I was just like, wow, there are so many people in here. Thank you so much for all the support. That was... Uh, I don't know, I kind of didn't expect that this would be as big a draw. It's on a Tuesday night that, you know, everyone's got their other things going on and... <laughs> wow, thank you so much, guys. It's been a one... <laughs> It's been so wonderful to be part of this for such a long time now. And uh, it, the great thing is now that there's so many more people learning these games. And please, if you're interested, please come join the Sonic Discord. All these guys are nice. All the people that uh, they know heaps of stuff about the games, they're all really nice. They'll help you on your way. Um, and there's, you know, this group of people here that are, you know, really coming on strong. and taking the game to new places and pushing me as well. And it's been fantastic to watch, particularly over the last six months to a year. And long may that continue. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, dude. <laughs> and that was the Sonic block. I believe it's Metroid up next, so don't go away. Lots more to come. Thank you so much, Mike, for that amazing Sonic 3 and Knuckles run. Once again, enjoy your retirement. We love you. All right, everyone. I've been Liz Star here for the Sonic Block, and uh, my time is over. But don't go anywhere. Metroid is up next. Just give us a few minutes. We will play some ads, 
and uh, we'll see you soon. Metroid block, Metroid block, Metroid block, Metroid block, Metroid block, Metroid block, Metroid block. Thank you once again for watching Summer Games Done Quick 2018. I'm Maple, and if you've just tuned in, have we got a show for you. Coming up shortly is a four-way 100% race of Metroid Zero Mission. In the meantime, let's read a couple of donations. We have $50 from Spymaster356. Gotta go fast and save those frames. Sorry, animals, but got no time to, to save yet. We have $25 from Puzzlebox. Had to donate during one of my favorite 16-bit series. We just left the $400,000 mark in the dust. Gotta go fast past that two million. This is going towards saving the animals because what would Sonic do? And now, we're going to throw it over for an interview. Okay. All right. All right. I, cu I couldn't figure out the driver at all. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Summer Games Done Quick 2018. It's summer, you know, not awesome. Yeah. So we're just a little laid back today, you know. Uh, rolled up the sleeves and leaned back a little bit. Exactly. Uh, my name is Jay Hobbs, and I'm here with Mr. Shasta. Hello. Shasta, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling pretty good today. Yeah, you got a run coming up in a little bit here, Metroid Samus Returns. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who aren't familiar with Samus Returns, because it's a pretty new game, why don't you just yeah. give us a quick little rundown? All right, so this game is very, very difficult just in general. It's a, it's just like the other games, too, it's a platformer with a few twists to it. It's like, for instance, there's 360 degree aiming in the game by just like holding the L button, like moving your circle pad around. That makes, makes things very interesting just to like maneuver and just move around with in general. 
it's really awesome. There's also a new mechanic called the melee counter, which if you time that correctly on every enemy in the game, you can actually get into a little animation which does like a lot of damage to them over and over like that. We're gonna use that a ton throughout the run as well. Also, there's a few different mechanics from Met so. As, I guess I, I forgot to say this in the first place, but it's a, uh, Samus Return is a remake of Metroid 2, mm. and like there's different things from that, like I just explained. So one huge different thing is the introduction of something called Aeon Power, which uh, throughout the game, uh, which is a bar, a yellow bar and bomb screen throughout the game, and there's always different powers you can use with this, and there's one particular that's really overpowered called uh, Beam Burst. It's just a very powerful burst of beams, really. <laughs> <laughs> just does a lot of damage, and we couple that with like missiles. Uh, just when that, I never get a different upgrade. That's good for damage. You use that as well too. Like if we're just gonna super missiles, once we get like a different uh, Aeon power, which, like we can like use it at the same time with it. It gets like really awesome. And there's a ton of damage output throughout the game because of that. It's, it's really cool. <laughs> well, uh, I've heard that this game is pretty broken. Yes, but it's also not even close to related to what we saw from you last time at AGDQ, because you were yeah. in Agent Underfire there, uh, you know, a first-person shooter, and mm -hmm. now you're running Metroid Samus Returns 2D, and I know you also run some Kirby games, and you do a whole bunch of different variety I of games. I run a lot of games. Yeah, is there, is it the variety that really appeals to you, or is it just, you just like, you know, you pick, pick the games you like casually and you, you run it? Yeah, pretty much. So. I have always run a game, uh, most of the games that I've run, I, of course, like this being an exception, I've it's just games that I grew up with, really. Like, I've run Metroid Fusion, I've run Metroid Zero Mission, which come up soon, by the way. I've run Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, which I almost got old arc in recently. <laughs> that sort of thing. It's, it's always nostalgia for me. That helps me, like, drive myself in general. It helps me drive, it helps me motivate myself just to get a better time in the game. Because I already know the game well, and I love the game already. So, like, I want to play it a lot more. <laughs> That's where Spearing comes in. Because I'll be playing the game a lot more, like, by Spearing it. It's right. really nice. Well, this is what your sixth GDQ appearance yes. now. Six GDQ runs. How? I mean, how, are the nerves any easier nope. going up? No, no, none whatsoever. <laughs> I'm still just as nervous as I was in my first run three years ago today, actually. Well, not oh, today, wow. but like three event, six events ago. Regardless, <laughs> yeah. They never go away. Never it's, go away. It's still always a lot of people. Yep. All right. Uh, well, why don't we get into some social media questions? Sure. Some people had some burning questions out there. Uh, at Lori Bunnykins asks, what's your favorite out of bounds color? Oh boy. Okay, so um, we go out of bounds in one of the layer areas of the game. And for some reason, all the textures just aren't there. There's only just like one flat color. And the one in area eight is just a bright pink. That's my favorite. <laughs> it's better than the one uh, layer, on, layer on the run, too, after that. So that's like, it's like a really dark green. It's like a yeah, it's like a dark green. It's really weird. <laughs> cool. Pink's always good. Yeah, pink's good. Uh, okay, well, at Riley, G-R-Y-C asks, favorite game to run? Because we just talked about you run so many. Yeah. Uh, it's between a few for me. It's between this game, personally. It's between, uh, and also Metro Prime Hunters. That game I ran, actually, I was just talking about it. Three years ago, I ran that game for the first time at GEQ. That game is extremely broken as well, but more broken in this game. And also very high execution. And since the game is actually a first-person shooter on a DS, you play the game like really differently than any <laughs> other game out there. I should run that soon in a marathon after the GEQ. Yeah, maybe that'll be marathon. number seven for you. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, our next question comes from at at Greater Things, who asks, "Are you hyped for Ridley and Smash? Yes, now, I am. Avid Smash player. Yeah. Okay. So I played. I actually played a demo for for uh, Smash Ultimate E3. I'm I'm a really avid Smash player. I've been playing competitively. Competitive Smash 4 for over two years now. Mm -hmm. I really like Ridley in that game. Ridley, in my opinion, is a combination between like how Charizard and Ganon plays, and like he's really powerful, but he's like also has these really nice tools in general to use. Like especially his neutral layer is awesome. I'm really hyped for him because I want to explore him as a character and just play him in tournaments. It's gonna be really cool. Awesome. We'll have to see if you decide to you know speed run any campaign mode or anything. Probably not, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> you never know. We'll see. <laughs> a little like Metroid adjacent if you do it with Ridley. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. The Jackal seventy nine new asks, "What is your favorite Metroid run you have ever done or seen?" Hey, Metroid I've ever ever seen is the one coming up right now, actually on the stream. Metroid's <laughs> Mission one hundred percent. It's one of my favorite speedruns ever. And I hope you all enjoy it once you see that. All the runners up there are top runners of the game. Like they're like, I think one, two, three, and five in the game. Oh wow! They're really, really good. They, 
they run the crap out of this game. <laughs> so yeah, favorite run I've ever done personally is, Met is I, I should just mention that, Metro Prime Hunters or this run right here I'm gonna do after the current, after Zero Metro Emerson race. All right, well, excellent. Shasta, it's yep. been great talking with you, man. Likewise, uh, man. Having you here. I do want to shift focus a little bit because we have Scent hanging around, as he always does. How you Hello, doing, Scent? Ah, oh, hey, Hobbs. Hey, Shasta. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. well. I'm doing all right myself. You want to tell us about some prizes? Oh, I do, because we got some really awesome prizes coming up for Metroid Block. And I just want to mention, you know, right now, I just looked at the tracker. I think Save the Animals is winning by about $1,000. Oh, that doesn't on. seem right. That can't happen. Come no. on. That can't happen. So maybe you guys get some donations in, especially towards these awesome Metroid prizes we have. Now, the first one here, Shasta, I think uh, you might know a little bit about. Yeah, I do. <laughs> because uh, this prize here is a Metroid Samus Returns prize pack from Mr. Shasta himself. That's me. So, hey. I mean, Shasta, tell us tell us all about some of these wonderful items we got. We got all right, some... so those stocks right there are a game are from GameStop, actually. It's a, it just has a Metroid, all the Metroid art from the game that came out for Metroid Samus Returns. Just has it on there. It's ah. really nice looking, see? Yeah, nice no, I mean, they, dark, they look great. Like I'm... space color. There's also these stocks right here, too, which are actually Canada exclusive. Oh, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. A Canadian exclusive. I, I love, love those. It. I want some myself. Yeah. <laughs> what? We got some Canada fans in the audience. Yeah, let's go Canada. <laughs> uh, you know, we have some Metroid lanyards. Yeah. We have a copy of Metroid Returns itself. It's actually the special edition, which Ooh. comes with a CD. Um, there are also pins and even a beautiful pair of like metallic amiibo. Can yeah, I talk mean... about those pins really quick as oh, well? Oh, sure, those sure, go for it. Those pins are actually a PAX, PAX West exclusive. So like it's they're pretty rare online to get. Mm. I think you might want to donate for that because it's a great collector's item, and you probably won't be able to get it again. So that might sweeten the deal for you. Those are certainly excellent, and that is a fifteen dollar donation from now until the end of Halo Two. Thank you so much, Shasta, for My donating pleasure. those to us. Um, from our good friend Casey Bai, we have these lovely Samus Perlers of uh, Gravity Suit and Varia Suit Samus in both Ooh. suit. And uh, ball form, you know. Wow, yeah. I like it. I, I like it. Awesome. Top, did you mind? Yeah, you, you want me to? Yeah, if you be Vanna mind. White for you here. Yeah, just just be be the Vanna White for me while I get out the uh, the Varia suit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I approve. Well done, Hobbs. Well nice. done. Nice. You'll be a prize master yet one day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there. Oh. It's just a prize apprentice right now. So we also have. Ooh, I gotta lean over for this one. From our friend Mishmash, we have uh, not one, but two uh, 3D Zero Mission holographic prints. I'm not oh my entirely sure how well this turns on camera, but it's, it's kind of one of those images that shifts a little if you move your head through it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's it's so super beautiful, super original. You can uh, see some reflections on the, the print that you probably shouldn't see, but yeah. the prints themselves are wonderful. And it also comes in this, this sparkly form that probably shows Ooh. up way better on camera. Oh yeah. oh yeah, there we go. And both of these combined are actually only a $10 minimum donation until Halo 2. So really? I mean, yeah, I mean, they're pretty pretty for a that 10 buck donation. Awesome. Yeah. Right, let's put these down real quick. Because I also have this lovely World of Nintendo Metroid figure. I mean, look at it. It's about six inches in, uh, in height. It's, uh, it's ready to suck your brains out or whatever Metroids, you know, absorb from you. I'm, I'm not, does, does the game ever really specify that? I don't think it really does. I, it just I, like, sucks away your energy. Frank, frankly, I don't want to know exactly what yeah. it does. It's, <laughs> it's probably best. This is actually only a $5 uh, donation That's until Halo 2. And uh, it was sent to us by Iggy Zig as well. So thank you so much, Iggy. Um, and guys, you know, I think that's just about going to wrap it up for the pre... Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry, Hops. One second. Commissioner Uyama. Prize man, save us! There's a horrible monster terrorizing the city! A horrible monster? Commissioner, I'm on the way. I'm sorry, valued citizens. I must go. Prize man, away! <laughs> Stop right there, you horrible fiend! You're Roar. terrorizing Roar. this innocent creature! Roar. <laughs> ah. ah! Now you're safe. Thank Don't you. worry, we've got Thank you. Thank you for saving me. Guys, this is an amazing Queen Metroid plushie made for us by the wonderful Ellen Kramer. It's so beautiful, it's so detailed, I mean, come on. Just, just, just get, a good, get a good look at her. And you know what? She comes with a fun little surprise if you, uh, Pull back, she's got a little egg sack. She lays little Metroid eggs. And the Metroid eggs themselves, well, 
If you turn them inside out, they hatch into these beautiful little baby Metroids. Isn't that just the absolute, ah, 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 get, get off me, get off me. Enough of that. Seriously, this is just a genuinely amazing plush. It's, it's absolutely one of a kind, and it's a $40 minimum, do $30, sorry, minimum donation between now and the end of Halo 2. Um, seriously, guys, you're going to want to get your donations in for this. Remember to get them in to kill the animals, by the way, because, like I said, that, that, that can't happen. We're speedrunners here. Anyway, that's going to be all for us. Uh, thank you, guys. Remember, you can always head over to gamesdonequick.com, check the tracker. If you need to find out what prizes, incentives, runs, whatever you need are coming up next. And uh, let's throw it back up to the host as we get ready for more Metroid. Thank you very much, Sent. We have a $75 donation from Loser93. Time to put in my biannual donation to kill the animals. We've got a $50 donation from Brian198. Love Sonic, love Metroid, love all of you and great causes. Here's to another awesome GDQ. Save the animals. We have $50 from Talon G4. Gotta donate for the Metroid block. Good luck to all the runners. We have $25 from Silver CHX. Second time donating to SGDQ, that Sonic block was great. Love seeing me some ridiculous out-of-bounds traversal. <laughs> we have $10 from Arsene. Kill the animals. As a reminder, this event is all for Doctors Without Borders or Médecins Sans Frontières, a medical humanitarian organization working in more than 60 countries around the world. MSF is a private international association. They provide assistance to populations in distress, to victims of natural or man-made disasters, and to victims of armed conflict. They do so irrespective of race, religion, creed, or political convictions. You can find out more at doctorswithoutborders.org. We've got $25 from Silver9. You know, Super Metroid this time around is 100% map completion. Completion infers doing everything. Everything infers saving the animals. Save the animals. I have $25 from Halprin. All these speed runs are great. I'm glad to donate for a great cause. We have $25 from Patsykin. 
as another one of the 12 people who played Spinball as a kid, I was blown away by that run. Little did I know that the Sonic 2 and 3 runs following it would be even faster. Great run so far. Let's follow Sonic's lead and save the animals. We have $15 from Bisa. Started speedrunning myself yesterday, and today I found out SGDQ is going on. Is this a sign? Keep up the work for the good cause. Go fast, but save the animals. We have $25 from Sam230. Love this event. Thanks to everyone. We have $25 from The Sound Defense. Thank you, Mike, for an amazing Sonic 2 run, as well as the delightful episode of Tails Ruins Everything. We have an anonymous $18 donation. Had to donate during Sonic Block, and like Sonic, I'm firmly in favor of saving the animals. We have $10 from Deltrix. First time donator. Glad I finally get to see the Metroid Block live. Can we get some Metroid hype? We have $100 from your old dad. I've played and beat every Sonic game on the original Sega, so it's cool to see things get demolished. And since Sonic saves the animals, put this towards saving the animals in Super Metroid. And let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, World 9 Gaming. From PCs to arcades and consoles old and new, World 9 Gaming aims to provide the highest quality video gaming experience to events in the Midwest and beyond. With our dedicated staff, tournament expertise, and expansive collections of games and consoles, World 9 is ready to take your event to the next level. For information on booking and upcoming events, check world9gaming.com. We have $10 from Time Space Cause. So excited for this Metroid block while I work on my Zero Suit cosplay and obviously kill the animals. We have $5 from Andrew122. Sonic saved enough animals. Save the frames. Kill the animals. We have $200 from Mark Vary. 
No donation comment provided, but thank you very much for your generosity. We have $15 from Clay Doggy. Shout outs to the everyone behind the scenes for doing another great job year after year. Save the animals. We have $30 from Humulos. It's probably not advisable to keep a Queen Metroid as a pet, but that won't stop me from trying to win her. We have $150 from the J Thar. Looking forward to the Metroid block and loving the event so far. We have $30 from Hulking Snake. First time donating, but even I know you gotta kill those animals. Metroid block! We have $25 from Majesty. Friday is my birthday, but it's better to give than receive, so I'm gifting $25. Loving the Sonic speedrunning games. We have $50 from Jake Romi, Romai233. Love catching the event twice a year. Donating to get as much Super Monkey Ball as humanly possible. Which, as a reminder, for a total of $36,000 donated, we have a possible bonus game of Super Monkey Ball 2. We are currently at $5,831.89. So we still have a ways to go, but I'm sure we can get there. We have $30 from President Heretike. Save the frames, not the animals. Anyway, if they can pilot a spaceship in fusion, they can get out of that room by themselves before the planet explodes. We have $150 from Little Grunt. Please, guys, do what's right. Kill the animals and save those frames. We have an anonymous $25 donation. I always enjoy seeing these games from my childhood run so solidly and brokenly. It always freaked me out as a kid when I glitched the game, especially the Metropolis glitch. But as an adult, it's great to watch them be useful. Wish you all the best for the future, Mike89. We have $150 from Alpha Griffin. Save the animals, otherwise Metroid Fusion doesn't make any sense. We have an anonymous $151 donation. Thank you GDQ for providing such great entertainment for my vacation on the couch.
We have $15 from Save the Animals. Save the Animals. And we have $40 from The Animals 113. Please save us. We have $50 from Flash Neko. Thanks for all you do, Doctors Without Borders. Glad I could get home in time for most of the Sonic block and to donate this to a good cause. Speaking of good things, you know Sonic is good enough of a guy to bring Tails to the party, so Mario can't let that hedgehog show him up. $50 to, br to bringing Luigi to the party in Paper Mario. We have $150 from Carbalook. Okay, Metroid plushie birthing Metroids? Yes. Also, nice to see Mike89 back and GDQ improv improving the world incrementally. We have $50 from Matt540. These biannual marathons are one of the highlights of the year. I love seeing everyone pull for a good cause. Much love. We have $15 from Adrastus. Save the animals? No, we must kill the animals. What have the animals done for you besides waste frames? We have $25 from Nello and Gilo. Metroid, woo! woo! We have $100 from Infernal Translator. As Samus is a professional bounty hunter, she doesn't kill unless paid. So let's see that professionalism and save the animals. And we have an anonymous $100 donation. Animals taught you how to wall jump. Don't let them down. We have $105 from Heavy Metal, Kill the Animals. I have $30 from DJ19. I went to buy a Samus figure, but they were sold out. It must have been fate. So here's that money instead for the Metroid block. Save the animals.
I have $15 from Certain87. I always enjoy playing the Metroid games. It's nice seeing speedrunners play these games for charity as well. I want this to go to saving the animals, because they just wish to watch too. We have $30 from Aaron Jevleth. So many Metroids, I want them all. Wait, they're coming right at me. I've changed my mind, ah! We have $100 from Rebel Moogle 95. Good luck to my favorite runner Shasta. Thanks for all the hours of chill streaming. We have $10 from Majestic Sea Flap Flap. My grandfather did a bit with Doctors Without Borders, so I'm always for contributing. And we have $250 from Giant Robot B. In this house, we save the frames. We have an anonymous $25 donation. Always love watching AGDQ and SGDQ. Bummed I couldn't make it in person this year, but the runs have been stellar as always. Keep up the good work and a special shout out to the staff that make these events possible. We have $15 from Piccolo 113. Kill the animals, but please spare that Metroid. We have $30 from Lisa. Since I am an awesome mom, I have to try to win that Queen Metroid plushie. He'll either love it or be traumatized for life. We have $30 from Kenta Kurodani. Though I wasn't able to make it this year in person, I'm sending lots of love to my fellow guys in the Metroid speedrunning community. I know this block is going to be amazing. Sam, Shasta, Oates, Scotty, John, and everyone else, bust these games wide open. We have $50 from Laura. Thanks to MSF, GDQ, and everyone for donating their time and energy to this event and cause. That Metroid Queen is a work of art. First time donating and I finally get to say, save the animals. We have an anonymous $25 donation that includes poetry. Roses are red, violets are blue, mother brain will be dead, and your precious frames too. Save the animals. <laughs> 